Hello and welcome to a last video about electrochromatics. When we started to talk about the electrochromatic scheme yeah, with the chromatic part and an and a electrical part, uh, we said we, we have seen a, a picture. Yeah? We have seen a plan and I said it is not a beginner's plan. Yeah? And now I think we are good enough, understandable enough for the matter that we can try to analyze this. I have here on the computer, I've placed uh, the two versions of my script here uh, in a certain way so that we can see on the left hand side we can see the parametric uh, scheme and on the right hand side we can see the, the electric scheme. So let's analyze this. Huh? What is written there actually is that BG1 and BG3 are operated. If you look where BG1 and BG3 are, both cylinders are traveled inside. Yeah? So BG1 is operated. If BG1 is operated, this approximate switch, this means we have here a signal and in path number two we are operating K1. Yeah? So K1 is operated. So this here actually, in this part, it is closed, all right? K1 is operated, K2 is not operated, K2 is open, and K6, since K5 is probably not operated, uh, I guess K6 is closed, as uh, is, is, is also not operated, okay? So K6 is in the position, in this position like drawn, okay? K1, the only, the only valve which is not in the position like drawn is K1, which is closed. What does it mean? Whenever I press the button, here they have then a connection to K3. So with the button S1, I can activate K3. All right? What is happening in K3? Some things we see, we have them in 6, 7 and 12, those contacts of K3. Let's start with 6, okay? So, let's say somebody is pressing the button, book, K3 is activated, all right? In 6, K3 is activated, book. What does it mean? Yeah. It means K3 is holding itself. Yeah. This means even, even if I release now the button, K3 will not be turned off because one contact of K3 is giving itself a power. So it's turned itself on. It stored my button press. Okay? We've talked about this way of storing something uh, back when we talked about electrical control. Yeah? You can have a look at this video. So this is a storing, this here. Yeah? This is self-holding contact. So K3 is holding itself with this six contact. Yeah? So I can activate K3, K3 will stay on. Good. Uh, K3 will stay on, for sure, even if I release the button, or even if the cylinder would travel outwards, uh, and K1 is open, also then K3 is not going to be switched off. And then in path number 7, K3 is closing, okay, this will not change anything, because actually uh, K4 is not open is for sure off, yeah, because K3 was open, so K4 was off, so, and K2, this is the limit switch, the outer limit switch of MM1, this is also open, so we will just prepare this, yeah, we will just close this, yeah. right now it has no effect. And the next one is 12, 12 is here, so here we are switching, now a different voltage, here we are switching a different voltage, to MB1, MB1 is here, so we are switching this valve, QM1, we are switching QM1, we can even see it here, so we have the mapping, and MM1 is traveling outside. Alright, so MM1 is traveling outside, with the touch of the button, MM1 is traveling outside. So BG1 will be released, does not really matter, because K1 is turned off, and K3 will stay on, so we will travel further outside, so MB1 will be energized longer, alright? And 
However, what is then happening? Then at some point in time, BG2 is activated. If BG2 is activated, K2 is activated. So K2 is activated. If K2 is activated, yeah, and K3 is still activated, yeah, then K4 book is also activated. All right? K4 is activated, and here we have again the storage. Yeah? K4 is now holding itself. Yeah? As long as K3 is on, K4 will stay on. Okay? What is K4 making? Yeah? Doing? Doing? <laughs> In path number 8, it is storing, it is holding itself. In path number 9, here, this we know, this is probably again uh, some, some preparation of the next step. Okay, Pfft, close here, but right now it has no effect. And here K4, zack, close, activating MB2. Alrighty, so MB2 is activated, switching QM1, QM2, QM2 is switched, so pfft, BG3 will be released, here it's open. Does not really matter uh, because K4 5 was also open, yeah, but okay, will be turned off. Yeah. Uh, and at some point in time, it will turn on BG4. Mm -hmm. So BG4 is turned on. Since K4 is on, yeah, it stays on because this is holding itself, and K2 is also still on because MM1 is out. Both cylinders are out, uh, K5 is activated. Good, K5 is activated. Let's see where those things are in path number 10. 10. Okay, it's holding itself again, so K5 is also activated. Now we have activated K3, K4, K5. Yeah? All of those Ks are activated. In path number 11, uh -huh. this will switch on. Will K6 also be activated? No, huh? because BG3 is no longer activated. I have to think about this, because MM2 is tra has traveled outside. Huh? So this is, uh, BG3 is open now, K6, nothing much will happen. And then in path number 13, 13, aha, see that? In path number 13, we will switch here, yeah? So this means MB2 is no longer energized. MB2 is no longer energized. We are returning with the spring. Pfft. MM2 will travel back in. All right. So MM2 will travel back in. This means BG4 is released. Does not really matter. K5 stays on. Okay. Stay on because it's holding itself, just because we are, re we are releasing BG4 doesn't mean anything. However, at some point in time, BG3 is activated. And K5, as just said, is still activated. And now we have reached a position where all those K3, K4, K5, K6, they are all now activated. Yeah? What does it mean? What is K6 doing? K6 is in, in path number 5, path number 5, K6. Oh, okay. So K6 will switch off K3. K3 will be switched off by K6. So it's only a very short time where all of them are on. So K, K3 will be switched off. This will be turned off. So even if K6 would then be switched off again, all right, then uh, this will stay off. Uh, so it will erase this one bit memory here. And if K3 is switched off, then also K4 is switched off because K3 is inside here. If K4 is switched off, here the K5 will be switched off. Okay? And if K5 will be switched off, K6 will be switched off. Okay? So K6 will be switched on and do the chain of of causalities, yeah, K6 will be immediately switched on off again. So it will be just yeah. whenever 
MM2 is hitting PG3 again, yeah, all of the things will switch off. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. K4 is switched off. Well, does not really matter too much, right? Because K5 was turned on and will be switched off after K4. Yeah. So MB2 will not be energized. And K3 is switched off, so MB1 will also not be energized. Yeah? So MB1 is not energized. Going back to rest position, in rest position, MM1 is traveling inside. Yeah? And we have reached, we have reached then the initial condition again. Both are inside. Okay? So what this control does actually is MM1 is traveling outside. Next step, MM2 is traveling outside. Next step, MM2 is traveling inside. Next step, MM1 is traveling inside. Okay? This is the logic for doing exactly this. This is pretty... Such type of logic, you can see there is a relay for every step. All right? So uh, there's a relay for every step. This is pretty usual. The next step will be prepared by this relay and at some point in time in this chain of causalities, is it chain of causalities? Yeah. This chain of commands, yeah, the step will be turned off again. Yeah. So this is usually where we turn off the step and this is usually where we turn on the step. Yeah. So this is, this is the preparation of the next step and this here is the reaching of the next step and the next step is active. If we really have a, a control which is, you know, step by step, yeah, then this relay would immediately turn off this relay. And if there's a duty this relay is doing, then we have to do it here in parallel. Then we have a pure function yeah? and then we usually need more elements. I'm not sure if I should have thought told you the last words. <laughs> yeah. However, you should be now ready to analyze such, such controls. All right? Just like we did now, we just by looking at plans, we have realized what this control is doing and how the cylinders are moving. All right? And I think you're ready to do this with unknown. Unknown control elements, yeah, so that you can analyze the logic behind. And actually, that's it. Yeah. Actually, what we have done now is we realized how electrochromatic or electro-hydraulic is working with these coils and so on, how with these coils are able to switch something inside, what valves we are using, yeah, what, what is pre-controlled and why it's only also a good idea to have pre-controlled if we have electrical controlled valves. Uh, we have done certain uh, examples of switching, yeah, of logic, electrochromatic diagrams and so on. And this was now the final diagram. And I think for an introduction to electrochromatic controls, this is sufficient. Yeah? You should now be able to, to have the knowledge. I think you have the knowledge now to analyze more complex things and so on on your own. So this is the end of our video series about electrochromatic and electrohydraulic. Yeah. Next topic in the series of automation technology would be measurement. Yeah. We want to measure something. Yeah. One thing of measurement we have already done this year. We measure position, presence or absence of, of things. Yeah? However, measurement is a big field. Yeah? So the next series of video, if you like to watch it, yeah, would be then measurement. Of course, I can recommend it. <laughs> for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.